What would happen if a forest suddenly sprouted in the middle of nowhere, inhabited by creatures that you could really only call monsters? Well, apparently we would turn it into a tourist attraction. So let's talk about the Haunted Forest Tour. So this book self-published by Jeff Strand and James A. Moore, and I can tell you already that I will definitely be reading more by these two. Now, I don't know if they have any books together, um, but I've checked out their books individually, and they both seem to have a lot of interesting titles under their name. Jeff Strand has a lot of B-movie horror comedy style stories. He's got a book called like uh, Clowns vs. Spiders, and he's got another one called Ferocious, which I think is about a guy going through the forest to a cabin or something, or some, I think his car breaks down, and there are basically like zombie animals in there, stuff like that. So, you know, a lot of stuff that you might see in like the 80s or 90s in like a horror movie. And then for James A. Moore, he's got less books, uh, if I'm being completely honest, he's got less books that I'm interested in. He has written some stuff that goes in the Alien universe. And then he also has a fantasy series, but he does have some other ones that I think I might check out. There's a short story collection. I think it's called This is Halloween, which, uh, you know, anything Halloween and books, uh, you know, that's, that goes with me. So I will I'll probably be checking that out in the future. Also, I do want to say that this is the first ebook I've ever read, so I can't compare it to other ebooks. It's just going to be like a general book review. So, yeah, this haunted forest, uh, you know, haunted uh, sprouts up in the middle of nowhere um, and it kind of destroys this town at the very beginning. This isn't really a spoiler. This happens like in the first chapter, but it basically destroys this town like trees are coming through the ground and, um, you know, ripping buildings apart, that type of thing. And then it fast forwards to this uh, tourism company that has set up a tram on tracks that goes through um, the forest and they're hosting this like special event for Halloween. They're taking a special tour group deeper into the forest than has ever been, you know, toured before. So there's this group of people that we meet and it's a pretty diverse group that's going on this tour. Um, we've got a uh, little boy who's going on it with his aunt and uncle. We've got a skeptic who kind of reminds me of James Randi, if you've ever heard of James Randi. If you haven't, go check him out. He's a pretty well-known skeptic that uh, died a couple years ago. And then we've got a uh, interesting character. He is kind of... Um, He's got like a strange relationship with his mother. He's it's he's kind of attached or his maybe his mom is just attached to him. And it feels like he's trying to like break out and be his own um, own person, be an adult. But he's got this like attachment with his mom and he's kind of the main character. But I hate to call him the main character because there's a lot of uh, different characters that the story follows. And I don't really think I'm spoiling this, but when they go on this tour, um, obviously things go wrong. Think Jurassic Park style. And while I'm on the subject of Jurassic Park, so this tourism company actually specifically says that it has a 100% safety record. No one's ever died or been injured while taking a tour. Even the um, construction workers that were building the tracks for the tram, no one died um, while building it and only a few people got injured and it wasn't related to the monsters at all. So if you've ever seen Jurassic Park, you know that no expense was spared on safety. Do be aware though that the story is pretty gory. Um, I don't usually like a lot of uh, gore in books or movies, but as long as it's like not overly gory and it doesn't go into a lot of detail, I think it's fine. I kind of think um, going into a lot of detail with gore is kind of um, overdoing it. It's unnecessary in a lot of uh, instances. In my opinion, with a lot of horror, you can kind of know that the person just like died or got hurt or something like that. You don't need to... Um, you know, go into graphic detail or anything like that. And I did just compare this to Jurassic Park, but be aware that this is not a techno thriller novel um, like the Jurassic Park series is. Uh, you're not, you won't get a lot of hard science in it. Um, if you've read the Jurassic Park or even watched the movie, you know that they kind of explain in detail how DNA works and how it could theoretically be possible to bring dinosaurs back to life, stuff like that. So you're not going to really get that in, um, in this book. The excellent explanations are more along the lines of like fantasy or supernatural um magic uh that's that's going to be kind of more on how they explain away certain things so what i really like about this book is the fact that it's like a b-movie horror uh, i grew up in the 90s and i watched a lot of horror movies way too young 
but I really enjoy that type of thing. And when there's like a kind of really cheesy story that's kind of far out there, no one else is doing, I really kind of grasp onto it. And it, it's something I usually want to check out. And that's definitely true in this instance. It's also just like a really fun story. And I hope that doesn't sound too grim because it is brutal and gory in some parts, but not overly so. So as long as you're okay with some death and, uh, you know, some people being injured, stuff like that. I mean, if you're reading a horror book, then you probably are okay with that stuff. But as long as you're okay with that, you should be all right reading this. Don't think it's uh, going to be extra brutal or anything. There are also like no dull moments in this book. Every part from the very beginning to the very end is basically like one action packed thriller of like horror and monsters and destruction. It's just it's it's really awesome. Um, if if you have any idea of what you're getting into just by the cover and just by the title of the book and, uh, you know, the synopsis, then you are most likely going to enjoy it. Because even though this is self-published, I couldn't tell it. I mean, there's like no grammar issues, no spelling mistakes that I found. Um, it's as polished as, you know, any other published book that I've ever seen. Hey, and real quick, everyone, um, before I get into what I didn't like about the book, if you are enjoying the video so far, please leave a like. And if you want to uh, tell me your own thoughts on the book and whether you plan on reading it, leave a comment below. If you do plan on reading it, feel free to come back later and leave a comment. I, I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you'd like to see more from me, um, please subscribe. So let's get into uh, what I didn't like about the book. The characters um, can be a little flat at times. For the first half of the book, uh, if I'm being honest, I didn't really care about the characters too much. When people died or got hurt or something, I was like, okay is it i mean was this supposed to be a main character was it not supposed to be a main character it's kind of hard to tell and i'm not sure if they did that on purpose but um the once the story progresses a little bit you do kind of feel more involved in their lives and uh, their backstory and you do kind of feel like a part of the group but um initially like i just really didn't feel like there was much depth to anybody it seemed like a lot of people might have interesting backstories like the skeptic um or, you know, the, the guy that's attached to his mom. But I, uh, you know, I wish I wish it would have been more upfront. And I wish we kind of explored it. If you are familiar with like Stephen King's work, a lot of times like he will go very deep into a, uh, a character's backstory and what makes them them. And I kind of wish that it was uh, the same way with this book. There are also at the um, at the end, a lot of unanswered questions Uh I said that this isn't hard science and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it not being hard science. I'm okay with stuff just be kind of explained away as magic or, or the supernatural stuff like that. But um, really I wish that there was more of a wrap up to what happened, um, why certain things happened and better explanations on what this whole story was about rather than how it wrapped up. And I, I can't give it away because this is a spoiler free review. I promise a spoiler free review. So I'm not going to give away anything, but just be aware that if you're like me and you kind of like everything like wrapped up, or if you're going to leave a cliffhanger, at least, you know, have a second book. But if you like everything wrapped up, then you might um, be a little bit unsatisfied with the ending. If you're thinking about checking this book out, then you know, you probably know what you're getting into, but if you don't, you know, it, I would highly recommend this book for anyone who likes B movie horror type stories. If you like horror comedies and stuff that's kind of way out there and different than what the mainstream's doing, you'll probably enjoy this. Also, if you just want like a quick read that you can read in a few days and you don't want to spend too much money, it's $3.99 on Kindle, which is a pretty decent deal. Um, the paperback's like $13 or $14 and I feel like I've said this so many times in other videos and like my past five videos, but I'm not trying to like upsell you on uh, buying, you know, a Kindle version or anything, but I do think for $3.99, this is a hell of a deal for this book. So that's my review, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to check me out on Twitter, it's at Chris Digresses. And if you want to check me out on Instagram, it's at Chris Digresses into books. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time. And once again, please like the video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll talk to you later.